Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is April the 12th, 2021. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I understand that Tyson Fury has been giving deadlines. He claims that if Joshua doesn't sign the contract that they've discussed uh, shortly, within the next few days, that he's going to move on. He's going to fight someone else. Now, first, let me just say, Fury's promoters, Bob Arum, Frank Warren, um, Joshua's promoter, Eddie Hearn, these are some of the very best in the business, right? One way to get advertising is to give the other fighter deadlines, right? You want free advertising. Maximize the dollar. People are going to follow the heavyweight champion around. If one of these guys says, hey, I'm not going to follow through with that fight, they're going to end up in the sports page. Guys like me are going to be here online talking about it. So make no mistake. I believe both guys want the fight to happen. I couldn't imagine Joshua not being able to get in the ring against Wilder and then not being able to get in the ring against Fury and still considering himself to be a credible fighter. Right? That wouldn't work. The hit to his reputation would be far too great. Likewise, Fury understands. If he's going to be widely considered to be the best heavyweight on the planet, he's going to have to beat a guy who's been champ for years, right? There's a hiccup there with Andy Ruiz. But Joshua's been champion for years, is also from the UK, and of course has multiple belts. So I believe both guys want that fight to happen. I expect the fight to happen. When it does, I'm expecting a one-sided affair, right? I believe all Joshua has is a puncher's chance. I think he gets undressed in the ring possibly stopped. So, let's talk about who Fury should fight if he doesn't fight Anthony Joshua, which would be a shame, right? And I believe there's really only one choice. Now, it's not Dillian White, right? I know White has done a lot. White certainly deserves a shot at the title, right? I'm not here to say otherwise. You beat people you know, you avenge losses, you really do deserve a shot at the title, especially if you've been at it a long time, right? But I believe that's a mismatch. Understand, White has a 78-inch reach, relies on a jab, right? Tyson Fury has an 85-inch reach, folks. Tyson Fury doesn't even have to come inside to fight White, right? White doesn't move as well as Tyson Fury. Fury could fight the same fight that he fought against Deontay Wilder. And I believe he'd blow out White. Now let me point out, this is one man's opinion. I want to be clear here, right? I'm just a fan. I'm not here pretending to be anything else. I picked against White in his last fight and White proved me wrong. Right? But understand, White calls himself the body snatcher. How's he going to get inside on Tyson Fury? Right? White has a great jab and is great in the pocket. How's he going to lull Fury into the pocket? Just ask yourself, who has better legs? While you do that, just put on a film of Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder the first fight, realizing that that was Fury's third fight back. If you want to go further back, put on a film of Tyson Fury against Vladimir Klitschko. Then tell me why he couldn't dance like that against Dillian White. Right? No, the fighter who Fury should fight, if he doesn't fight Joshua, is a fighter who can match him in foot speed. 
In other words, Fury decides to stay outside, just jab his way to a victory. He has the reach on this guy. This guy also only has a 73-inch reach, right? So Fury has a sizable reach advantage. Understand, Fury, as coordinated as he is, is six foot nine, right? But make no mistake, in terms of pure boxing ability in the heavyweight division, I believe Usyk is better than, let's say, Anthony Joshua, right? Usyk, too, is a southpaw. That brings a little bit of a different dynamic to the party. If Usyk, by the way, has beaten Joe Joyce, right, who is currently an unbeaten contender, right? He beat Joe Joyce in a pseudo-professional league, right? The World Boxing Super Series or something like that, or World Series of Boxing or something like that, right? Of course, Usyk's beaten Derek Chisora already. Well, in Usyk, Fury fight's interesting because Fury has problems with smaller, faster guys. Now, it's an open question since Usyk's older than him. Whether Usyk's faster than Tyson Fury at this stage, right? That's an open question. Let's just say that an Usyk Fury fight opens up dynamics you don't have in other fights. Now, I will say, because Usyk is coming up from Cruiser, and because Tyson Fury is a natural heavyweight who's been hit his whole life by heavyweight punches, I would give the experienced heavyweight Fury the edge in the fight. Right? But let's just say you're not going to have the kind of dynamic you had in the Wilder fight where Fury just starts throwing power shots from outside. And Wilder, who can't load up on his right hand, didn't know what else to do except get hit, right? You're not going to have that dynamic, and you're not going to have the problem you have in the Joshua fight, where Joshua's been a slugger, right? Joshua, I know he moved against Andy Ruiz in the rematch, which Ruiz came in out of shape, right? But let's face it, in terms of movement, Joshua lacks Fury's fluidity, Right? I suspect that a Joshua Fury fight is going to look very similar to the Fury-Vladimir Klitschko fight. Understand, in my opinion at least, Joshua models himself after Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Neither guy goes to the body that much. Both guys are super cautious. Both guys have big-time power in both hands, right? Both guys have big hooks. Both guys like to paw at you early in the fight. That doesn't work against a Tyson Fury, who is jabbing you and moving, bringing the fight to you, not looking at you the first few rounds, setting up a slow pace. No, he's making the pace faster. He's forcing you to do something other than be tentative to win rounds. And we know, just like Vladimir Klitschko, got dropped multiple times by Sam Peter. We forget that fight. He gets stopped by Ross Purity. We forget that fight. He gets dropped by Corey Sanders early. We forget that fight. He gets stopped by Lehman Brewster. We forget that fight. Right? One of the secrets to Anthony Joshua is his chin might not be that great. Right? By the way, nor is Fury's. Right? Fury has been down in multiple fights. So, I feel that the pace would be too fast for Joshua. I feel that Joshua really can't fight backing up. Fury can. Right? Fury can stay outside and win rounds. I know Joshua is loved by judges. 
I understand that. But if Fury comes out and just emphasizes volume, just pumps his jab a little bit, understand, when you have an 85-inch reach, you're not too worried about quick counters, especially not from big clunky guys like Anthony Joshua. So if Fury just comes out, think about his start against Deontay Wilder in their first fight where Fury is just boxing. He's not even trying to blow out Wilder, right? In my opinion, and I don't care what the judges scored, Fury sweeps the early rounds. Against Anthony Joshua, Fury sweeps the early rounds and is still outside playing distance games, right? How is Joshua going to get out of his cautious shell to come find Fury when Fury's operating behind a jab? Right, and is controlling the spacing and the rhythm of the fight. So I feel that Fury against Usyk, both unbeaten, right? You can't say that for Fury against Joshua, can you? Fury against Usyk would be spectacular. Let me also say, too, you know, for me, the real belt is the lineal, right? From time to time, I keep hearing. Someone say, oh, the WBC belt's the best. The WBA belt's the best, right? I keep hearing about these alphabet soup bets and stuff like that. You know that when you're dealing with Tyson Fury, who beat Vladimir Klitschko and was legitimately the champion of the world and hasn't lost since, you know that he has as good a claim to the lineal championship as anybody else in the sport. You understand that, right? You also understand, too, that he did beat Deontay Wilder. He is a WBC belt holder, right? Fans understand if Joshua doesn't follow through on this fight, and I think he will. Right? But if Joshua doesn't follow through on this fight, then Fury, Usyk, who's unbeaten, who was undisputed at Cruiser, who's an Olympic gold medalist, who's a mandatory for one of Joshua's belts, that's as good as it gets in the heavyweight division. I would argue that Fury would have a harder time winning that fight than winning the Joshua fight. I think Fury beats both guys, but let's just say against Joshua, he can stay outside. Against Joshua, he can start fast, throw a lot of bombs, but not be in the pocket where Joshua needs him. Right? Joshua has ring coverage. I'll agree with that. Joshua has an underrated left hook. I'll agree with that. But I have no idea how Joshua stamina-wise would be able to hang with Tyson Fury. You saw Joshua at the end of the first Andy Ruiz fight. I say the end of the fight, you and I know I mean the seventh round. Joshua didn't make it into the latter part of that fight. You saw Joshua in the middle of the fight against Vladimir Klitschko. He's out on his feet after being knocked down. It took him a while to get back into that fight. Right? Joshua can go the distance when he isn't pushed. Right? The Joseph Parker fight. Referee wouldn't allow them to fight inside. Right? Joshua can go the distance under those circumstances. I'm not sure if he can go the distance in a fight where he's pushed early by a guy with a long reach, a jab, ambidexterity. Understand, Usyk's ambidextrous too. So you'd have real chess, right? I don't think Fury can beat Usyk left-handed. So you'd have to have some interesting dynamics going on. If Usyk comes out left-handed, right? I think Usyk's a natural southpaw. I think Fury's a natural righty. I think both guys can fight too fast for the other guy to play to their offhand. Right? And so, 
to be, if I had to pick a fight, if Joshua Fury doesn't happen, and let's face it too, this is boxing, we've seen wilder things. How many years did it take us to get Floyd Mayweather in the ring with Manny Pacquiao? Right? How many years has it taken us of encouraging Amir Khan to fight Cal Brook and those guys can't get it together to fight? Right? So I've seen weirder things. If Fury Joshua doesn't happen, I hope Fury pivots to Usyk. Unbeaten against unbeaten. Undisputed cruiserweight champion at one time against the lineal, the WBC, heavyweight champion, who's also unbeaten. Right? Let's have at it. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. And make no mistake, too, I want to be unambiguous here. I believe the best heavyweight on the planet is Tyson Fury. I do believe, though, that agile, smaller guys pose the biggest threat to him. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your message in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.